Luke chapter 3. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Dayton, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Etruria, and the region of Tretronitis, and Lysias, the tetrarch of Abilene. Well, this verse here is this. Notice Pontius Pilate is on the scene entire ministry of John the Baptist to the empty tomb Jesus Christ Pilate is not without any excuse he is here from John's preaching it's not like he showed up a year a year before Jesus dies here he is in chapter 3 and what's the last chapter of the Bible of Luke there's quite a few of what Pontius Pilate knew and believe me, every time this guy would do something in the land, I'm talking about Jesus, do something, like, made it back to his ear somehow, some way, because he's the ruler of the land. He has to report back to Rome. Who's this guy up serving? Who's this king of the Jews running around here, Pilate? Remember, you know, Jesus was a threat to the Roman government. Well, maybe that's why he protested so much. Oh, the, the, the famous, well, the famous word, like, you, like you're saying, the famous words of Pilate is, here he is, he's on the scene. And he's, his entire words were, because in envy, you brought him to me. And he tried to release him. He kept saying three, four times, he's innocent. So Pilate is no dummy. He's just a, a wicked sinner under Adam's wrath and just did not ever believe on Jesus Christ as a savior. He feared the people. He feared the people and he was just an idiot. Yeah. He believed in his Roman gods, but here he is. It's very important to realize when Jesus is standing before Pilate, Pilate is no idiot. He hears all the reports. Anus and Caiaphas, or Caiaphas, being the high priest. Well, that's interesting. How'd you get two of them? In the Old Testament, there was one. The word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he came unto all the country about Jordan. There was only one priest with Ezra and Nehemiah. How come we got two? And he came about Jordan preaching the baptism of repentance for the remissions of sin. Jesus hasn't even begun his ministry. Mark that one. We haven't got to the death, burial, and resurrection. Oh, let's go run to be baptized. That's kind of interesting because in Jewish history at this moment right now, the only two baptisms that ever happened in the Bible, the Old Testament, is a man that had leprosy and was a Gentile, and a man who got swallowed by a fish and died and went to hell, but we don't believe that story, even in your Baptist churches today. Other than that, here comes John, he shows up. What is this thing putting people under the water? Well, I'm talking about here. I'm talking about what we're up to in Jewish history right now. Here's this guy out in the wilderness now throwing people in the water for repentance. What is this? This hasn't happened in the Old Testament. John's bringing something new: repentant and get under the water. So there, what I'm trying to say is, there's a commotion now. There's some fruitcake over there in the Jordan River, and he's preaching, and he's putting them in the Jordan River. Oh, yeah, and it would be on the gospel line. Everybody would know. So, when you come into the beginning, especially Luke is so good because he comes from the beginning. There is mayhem. And when they profess not to know who Jesus is, come on, you don't know these events of John? As is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, <coughs> saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, John, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So, John is sent to the, to the nation of Israel, the Lord is coming. Every valley shall be filled. That's the second advent. Every mountain and hill shall be brought low, second advent. And the crooked shall be made straight, second advent. And the rough way shall be made smooth, second advent. Had the nation of Israel received Christ, verse 5 would just gone right into verse 4. 
you would have had the tribulation period sometime after Jesus' death, death, burial, and resurrection, the seven years, then you were going into eternity. Somehow, how? I don't know, because it never happened. They rejected him. You see how close it is? Here's the Lord coming. Well, that's the first advent. That's the baby walking now, a young, young man, 30 years old, coming. And he's going to make, no, he doesn't make the valleys fill. He doesn't make the mountains fall. That's a prophecy yet to be fulfilled. It is a two-part prophecy. One's fulfilled and one's yet to be fulfilled. Which would, which would put the word together. Had Israel received Christ as their Messiah, those two would have been fulfilled together. And we'll never know how that would have been. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Well, that would be Jesus Christ. Then said he to the multitudes, He's preaching. And look at my notes here. In Matthew 3, it's to the Pharisees and the Sadducees that came forth to be baptized of him. Old generation of vipers. Ooh. Oh, wait a minute. Matthew, the multitude in Matthew 3, it's the wilderness of Judea. Here, he says, you generation of vipers. That's the Pharisees and Sadducees. What a way to dress your congregation. I mean, can you just see the princing and the mincing that the Pharisees and Sadducees, you probably heard them coming a mile away. If I had a little, you know, the Bible said, you know, bells and all that, and a little entourage of secret service, you know, little, holding a little microphone. Yeah, here he comes. Get the people out of the way. He's coming. I forget what Bible word they use. Great pomp. That's a wonderful word. And he just... See them up there, you know, their shoulders are upright. They're high and mighty. You generation of... I'm going to have to take a tone when she upset me. Quick, the blue pill. Hurry, I may need a red pill. Come on. You don't believe he said that to me. You generation of Satan. That's what he's saying. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? That's a venomous. Who has... Warned you to flee from the... Are they coming to be warned? Are they coming to flee? Paul would have. Some did get saved. Uh, Nicodemus was of this crew. Paul was of this crew. So not all of them. Joseph of Army. So there are some here. And we know one thing about Paul. Between this time and, and John's imprisonment, Paul was baptized of John. Probably. All the disciples were came. Bring forth, therefore, fruit worthy of repentance. Ooh, there, there's something not found in the church age. Before you come to me and before I put you in the water, you better show some fruit. Now, I'll tell you how you use that in the church age today, according to James. You're saved. You show me some fruit. Paul said in Romans 10 that we use it to witness to people who are lost. If you don't confess Jesus Christ with your mouth, I can question your salvation. I have that right. I don't know. Only God, Satan, and you know about your salvation, but... According to James and Paul, I can look at you and say, you know what? I don't think so. And based upon that aspect, how I deal with you is, I'm not going to talk to you as a Christian. I'm going to talk to you as a lost man. Unless you show some fruit. But here, there is no salvation. He's repenting and then baptizing. He's preaching repentance, then put under the water. And these guys show up. He says, you know what? You better bring something. Show me you repented. Now, what would somebody like Paul would bring? Or Nicodemus? Paul was zealous for the word of God, but it also seems like to me he had a little conscience problem. In my own two senses, I think Paul was... When Jesus said, thou persecuted me, I think Paul was under conviction. Some say that that young rich ruler was Paul. And I've heard the arguments. I, I, I'm not going to say yes, I'm not going to say no. 
But John, you can't go run to Luke 3 and say, okay, now this is the church age. It's not. Jesus is not even on the scene yet. So don't go say, oh, works and baptism. And begin not to say within yourselves, and he says in Matthew 3, think in yourself. Don't even think it. We have Abraham to our father. Don't you go about your family roots. We're done with that. It's going to be a time pretty soon. I don't care if you're of Abraham. You better be born again. You better be born of God through Jesus Christ. There are people today of Abraham who are in hell because they have not believed on Christ. There are people who are not born of Abraham. Definitely a pure conscience and, and visual show they are not of Abraham. And yet they're going to, to be with the Father by Jesus Christ. To your fathers, for I say unto you that God is able these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. We've talked about that. This is the very spot Matthew says that we're... Joshua cro crossed over. And one of those 12 little stones there. You see those 12 stones over there? Probably a little monument park there, you know. Little Japanese people that are taking pictures of it, you know. Little brochures and $5 candies. I visited Joshua's landing place and stuff like that. This is interesting how where Joshua crosses over into the promised land, this is where this is the place that John the Baptist is preaching. You know what's next to John the Baptist? A cursed city. Where a Gentile woman got saved. Put all the put all the testament into what we're reading. What's going on here? Joshua is coming. Here comes Jesus. He's coming. Joshua means Jehovah saves. Jesus, Jehovah saves. You know what that woman said in in, in Jericho? We heard you were coming. <laughs> and we fear you. We shut up the whole entire city. That's what the people are doing now already. They're shutting up the city because they don't want him to come. How quick did we see in Mark? They rejected him. Weren't we even two chapters already? It's strange because generation after generation wanted that virgin birth. To, to well, even, even that is true, but... Are the Jews really interested in building the temple in Israel today? No. They, they don't care. America, the money in America is fine. Everything else is fine. We got the gold market. They don't care. And they're in the same place they are here. I bet you some good girls like Mary, oh, I would love to give birth. And other people like, hey, we're, we're holier than now. We don't need God. We're go here we go. We're going to bring in the kingdom, then God will come and bless us for it. That's the same motif. That's what the Catholic Church is today. We'll build the kingdom, and then Jesus Christ will come and pat us on the back. It's the same thing. Match this with where John the Baptist is and where Joshua comes in, and you got the you got the you got the thing. Moses is gone when Joshua crosses over. Guess what Jesus does? He gets rid of the law. And now also the axe is laid unto the roots of the trees. Men are like in the trees all over the place. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit. Every tree will bring forth fruit. Even if it's fruitless tree, it brings Berry forth something. Seeds. Bark, sap. Or if it don't bring forth anything, it's no good. It's not a tree you can eat. And then there, was this, there was a war in the Old Testament. And the Bible said you can, cut, you can chop those trees down. But if it's an apple, nut tree, something like that, don't you chop it down. But if it ain't got nothing you can, that man can eat up, go ahead, cut it down. Every person produces some kind of fruit in their life. We Christians produce both, and we ought not to. Did you know Satan has fruit? You know his fruit has seed? Then, G, then the parable Jesus said, he went out and planted it in the field, and someone came and said, Jesus, I mean, God... God there's tares among the wheat. Where did that come from? Fruit, seeds. Which bring forth not good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Now, gee, I wonder what that means. All right, so let's take this verse as a Christian. Kirche, if you don't produce other Christians, you don't win souls, you're going to burn in hell. 
See, you can't apply that here. But at the judgment seat of Christ, if you don't do nothing to have good fruit, it will be burned. Not you. John is truly in a place right here. You better show yourself worthy to get into the land. I didn't say heaven, did I? I said land. That's a Jewish heaven. With Jesus Christ as king. They want this land. They want a Jewish king on the throne. They want their land. They want Rome out. Okay? You better be worthy of it. And the people asked him, saying, what shall we do then? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Is that what they said in Acts 16? Isn't that what the prisoner came in with? The what shall I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, isn't, that, isn't that what the Bible said? Okay, let's see if we're in the church age here. What, aren't the people saying, what must I do to be saved? Verse 7. Isn't that what they're really saying? What can we do? He answered and said unto him, he that has two coats, let him impart to him that has none. Wait a minute. That's not Act 16. How much is that accountable today? I don't know where you are in the world, but I'm in Daytona Beach, Florida. I drive 22 miles one way to work. Do you know how many drop-off receptacles I see for clothing? And somebody thinks if I take my own clothes and put it in that thing to give it to Goodwill and the veterans and all that, I'm a good person. Because Jesus said, if you have two goats, give one. Are we in the church age? I can give you a good coat. I can give you a coat because I'm a nice guy. But that ain't going to save me. I can't run to Luke 3 and say, here, have, have, oh, let me buy you some clothes. Okay, I'm going to heaven. But a Jew in, Luke, in Luke's time, in John's time, yes. That's in the law. This is what John is saying. What there, you can find this in the law. Right now it's so perverted because if you put your clothes in those boxes. They make money off them. The people, the people get free items and sell them to the poor people. Yeah. Well, they're, they're in the law state, you know, if you got a man's pledge, you better return it to him. If you see a brother naked, destitute, this John is preaching the law. Let him impart to him that has none. And he that has meat, let him do likewise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a soup kitchen in my church. And feed all the poor people without preaching no gospel or anything. That happens. Catholics do that. And that will affect your ministry on the street. Don't tell me I know Norwich, Connecticut. I have dealt with homeless people and I had one man who had a great story to tell me about his past and everything. Very interesting. But he's saved because the nuns take care of him at the soup kitchen. I could do nothing with him after that. But yet, this is also in the law. John is preaching the law. Well, that's what they're under right now. That's that's true, and that's their dispensation. That's why they're all sick. Then came also publicans. Ooh, the tax collectors. You know how you said start giving in the, in the tax? Uh, you need a receipt for that? We can conduct it. And I think that's wrong, but that's you can use. Well, that was we already discussed that in other previous chapters. Then came also the publicans. Now they were the hated. They were the worst people. Do you wonder who maybe could have been in this group? Think Matthew. Matthew. Or what is other name? Levi. Levi. Here comes his group. And do you remember what happened after he got saved? No, he, he yeah he left, but he went to his house and had publicans and sinners, and Jesus feasted with them. So you got the Pharisees, you got the Sadducees in Matthew three, and you got the publicans showing up at John. We're going to say that the disciples show up somewhere along all this time too. They didn't know who this Jesus was. If they did not know who Jesus, now let me say this reverently. Like I said, I don't think we're going to do chapter by chapter. Let me just say this reverently. I don't mean no 
disarmed to John the Baptist. He was, Jesus said, he, of all the women that were born, this is the greatest. Let me say that. If they did not know who Jesus Christ was, now let's, let's look here again. Verse 4. Let's look at John's ministry. As is written in the book of Isaiah, the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. If they did not know who Jesus Christ was before he came, John was a failure as a minister. And you can throw Isaiah 39 out the window. Yeah, 30, no, 40 out the window. John has got everybody in him. He's got the Sadducees. He's got the Pharisees. He's got the publican. He's got the sinner. He's got the people. He's got the disciples. Before they're even disciples. He's preaching, here comes the Messiah. He's got Pilate here. He's got everybody here upon the scene of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and the trial of Jesus Christ. You know what I say when I'm down at the farmer's market and I preach sometimes? You can't tell God I don't know. I'm without excuse. Because I have left you excuseless by telling you what the Bible says. These people are excuseless because John has, I know John has done his job. So don't come off as you're going to read the rest of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We don't know who you are. Yes, you do. And God even said, Matthew, Pharisees and Sadducees. And God even said in Luke, uh, publicans. He gave you all your branch of people. You heard, John, you're without excuse. And Pilate, who shows up, says, envy did it. We're not even in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ already. We've already seen the trial and the crucifixion and why they did it to Jesus. They said unto him, Master, what shall we do? The tax collector. And he said unto him, Exact no more than that which appointed you. Don't overcharge. Don't excharge excessive fees and penalties and whatever IRS word and take the persons over the rake of the coals and then take what's left over. You know another name for this one? Zacchaeus, chapter 19, verse 2, was a tax collector. And you can also find this charge in Micah 6, 8. And the soldiers, you remember who came, to, came and arrested Jesus the night in the garden? Do you remember who beat Jesus up in uh, before the high priest? Soldiers. You know who put a crown of thorns upon his head? Who soldiers? The Jewish soldiers or the Romans? It doesn't say, does it? Yet, yeah, you know who the wonderful men are in the Gospels? The centurions. Now, I'm calling to wonder, are these the Roman soldiers or are these all soldiers showing up? You find me one bad centurion in the Bible. Go ahead, try to find one. At least when, when Jesus died, that one centurion said he was the Son of God. And he got it wrong, but who else proclaimed him to be the Son of God after his death? The soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, demanded, forceful. What shall we do? And he said, do violence to no man. Matthew 27, 29, Mark 15, 17, John 19, 2. Don't you punch him. Don't you beat him. Don't you whip him. How's that one? How's that for a prophecy? Notice it say, what's it say? Do violence to no men, right? No, it does not say men. It says man. How's that? And behold, what did Pilate say? Behold the man. Look at that. Don't you change the Bible. I don't even, I don't care. I used to be into modern Bibles and I don't do it no more. I'd like to see what they do with that one. You change that man, man to men, you, you ruled out Jesus Christ. He already told those. So if that's the case, those soldiers there, like Pilate, like the Pharisees, like the fat, I got Pharisees and the Sadducees. These are all the people who are going to be there at Jesus' trial in three and a half years later. Everyone wanted to know, so hey, you know, I, heard, I think I heard a message about this, guys. 
with a conscience. Likewise, demanded him, saying, What shall we do? Do violence to no man. Neither accuse any falsely. Now that seemed to be thinking of the soldiers. Um, you see what happened is, we were on guard and we fell asleep and the disciples came and stole the body. 50 pieces of servo? Okay, I'll take it. How's that one? And be content with your wages. I guess Judas wasn't. And as the people were in expectation, all men mused in their hearts. Look at that. Take that to John 10, 9 and 10. Whether, were, whether he was Christ or not. And John answered, saying to them all, <coughs> I indeed baptize you with water. But one mightier than I cometh, the latch of whose shoes I am not worthy to lose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. God had to reveal to John somehow that you know, those people think you're the one. And John put the brakes on. See? Stop. I ain't him. John is so humble. Man, he stopped that railroad car quick. Hey, this is not your train. I'm just carrying the stuff for God, but I ain't the train. The locomotive is up ahead. And you know what? I can't give you the Holy Ghost. How's that for a Pentecostal movement? John says, I can't give it to you. And I don't even have the power to put you in fire. Matthew and Luke speak about the fire. Mark doesn't. Be baptism with the baptism with the baptism of fire. I don't want that fire. You can go in the lake of fire if you want. Whose fan is in his hand? That's a threshing floor. Threshing floor in the Bible is, is judgment. And he will thoroughly purge his floor. That's where you put all the grains that has been just picked. Problem is, they got the chaff. You don't use the chaff. You got to separate the chaff from the nut or fruit. And will gather the wheat into his gardener. That's a barn. You take all the good and you, you, you gather it up and you put it in the barn. But all that chaff, all those stems, all those leaves, all the junk. But the chaff he will burn with fire. Run this back to 16. Unquenchable. Please tell me what fire that you get the unquenchable. That, Come on, come on, Mr. Pentecostal. Tell me about that baptism of fire that never ends. I mean, you go home with it. And I've, I've watched the videos on YouTube and all that. They do it in church. Do it in the workplace and see if you still got your job tomorrow. Now, I'm worried, you know, I'm going to get talking to my HR about giving out gospel tracts. But you do this stuff in your boss tomorrow. Oh, wait a minute. It stopped. Because we run to Matthew. Yeah, baptism of the Holy Spirit and the fire. Yeah, but John said over here, unquenchable fire. No fire fire can put this fire out. Fire fires will go into hell, but they're not going to put it out. California has got wildfires, but they eventually put them out. And many other things in extortion. Preach he unto the people. Now, remember what John said? I mean, if we were to do everything, you, know, you couldn't contain them. You could not carry that Bible to church. Violent, violent, uh, uh, violent, volume. I can't speak. All right, congregation, pick up volume number one million. Turn to letter J. Page 456. <laughs> And we'll talk about Jerusalem. And we'll have to continue to volume number 200. You know, that's, you wouldn't be able to carry the Bible if everything was written. I'd love this. I mean, if John, these guys walk up to John, you vipers. Can you imagine what John's ministry was? You, you couldn't get over on him. You couldn't come up to John and give him a sad story that wasn't true. But I bet if a widow came up to him, I bet you'd give her time. I get accused of not being, you know, listen, you come up to me and you're really poor and you really got a sad story. I got some things to, to, to see if you're really, and I'll help you. But if you're not and you just want cigarettes or booze, I ain't get out of you. You ask my family. 
But Herod, the churchyard, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, oh, here's that again, and for all the evils which Herod had done. This guy got a guilty conscience because, because John the Baptist walked up to him, declared his sins, and he ended up in jail. Yet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. I bet you that didn't shut up John. John may have been shut up. I don't think he was shut up. There was a preacher in Virginia a long time ago, and, and, and he was shut up. The congregation would gather, and they tried everything they do to shut up that preacher. Whap his hands on the bars, build a wall, and they raise a flag. Okay, preacher, we're all here. Start preaching. Uh, Richard Rumba. They would tap on the wall saying, in five minutes, we're going to have a message. All the, all the people put their best rags on. Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying in the heaven opened. What would that look like? Could you see heaven? Now, with Matthew, we read, I believe only John saw this. I don't think Pharisees would have seen this. Uh, I can just picture John. I mean, John's right. Jesus gives him. I can just picture the heavens open, and John looks up, and there's God waving him. Hey, that's him. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape, like a dove upon them. In Matthew three, the Spirit of God. And it said, this descended like a dove. Now here's a bodily shape. What was this? I'll tell you exactly what it was. I don't know. So don't make pictures. You may find out by God you're wrong and have to give an account for all the money you made for the, for the, for the picture of a dove. People want to make money. Jesus is the reason for the season. That's a lie. You're going to give an account. Because first of all, you got the wrong season. So he descended in a bodily shape like a dove, like a dove. And with Matthew, it looks like how he came down was, I mean, you look at a dove, how he, I don't know. And came upon, and, came, and the voice came from heaven, which said, okay, Jesus is in the water, wet from head to toe. John didn't sprinkle. The Holy Spirit has come down. God is now going to speak. There's the Trinity assigned to John the Baptist now isn't this a wonderful thing this for John to see you think this settled his heart forever you think John was settled by this scene right now forever in his heart he was settled Knowing that yeah. then he send his disciples out and say go go ask are you the one Remember he's in jail? He's, he's having a, he sends his disciples out. His disciples said to Jesus, John sent to say, are you the one? They said, yep. You see how I, the sick are healed, the lame walk, the blind see? See, you could see something like this as a human man and still have doubt sitting in a prison. See, John forgot this. Don't go looking for the great signs for God. Because they're not going to relieve your life when you got troubles and problems. John's going to be sitting in jail. He's going to be like, if I was so good, what am I doing here? And where's this kingdom I preached? And he said, the body shape and voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. About 30. He's not 30. How old is he? I don't know. But I know one thing. You date this back about 30 years earlier, he was born. There's his birthday. Well, when was this? I don't know. We're not even told how old he was when he started the ministry. Being, oh, here we go. As this, being, now here's a parenthesis, important. Turn your lights on. High beams, as was supposed. And the parenthesis, the son of Joseph. Remember Mary said, your father and I, we were so worried. Suppose they thought that Joseph was Jesus' father. And the Bible says to the Holy Spirit, suppose it wasn't Joseph. 
The common thing of Israel was, that's Jesus' daddy. You know what Christians say today? That the suppose Jesus, the carpenter's, what? So, no. Is God a carpenter? No. Absolutely not. Throw that bumper sticker out the window. Boy, don't you just, look? we're three chapters in Luke. Look at all the things we just shot down. We shot down the wise man. We shot down the Virgin Mary. And we shot down all that stuff. Three chapters. I love the Bible. I love Luke. I run to Luke as much as I can. He's great. Well, she was a virgin until she yeah, she was. A, a child well, I'm talking about the Roman Catholic Church. That you know, after which she. But they never talk about the protectual virginity of Joseph, though. That's all right. And after he's thirteen, you never hear about him again. Nope, until almost thirty, about thirty. Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, you mean Joseph? No, you don't. We don't know what happened. After, after age thirteen, you never hear about Joseph. Now, Jesus. which was the son of Heli? You know who this guy is? This is Joseph's father-in-law. This is Mary's dad. Because we're running Mary's line now. So if you ever ask a question that people don't know, what was Mary's mother? What was Mary's father's name? Eli. Why does it say the son of Joseph, which was the son Jesus, of Eli? It would be Joseph, the son of Joseph, which is the son of Eli. Joseph is his son-in-law. That son could be grandson, great, great, remember Jesus, the son of David? Well, there's quite a bit of sons in there. So a son could be also a son-in-law, which was the son of Matha, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Malchai. Here goes a good name. We're going to go through as hard as we can. Which was the son of Jenna, which is the son of Joseph. Notice how Joseph keeps showing up. 75 times in 16 verses, the son of. Watch the names, even though I can't pronounce them. Which was the son of Matthias, which is the son of Amos. Jesus has got a line through Mary of very Old Testament names. The son of Amos, the son of Nao, without the eight, which is the son of Eshli, the son of Nagai, Nagai, which is the son of Math, Math. See, there's Math in the Bible. Which was the son of Matthias, which is the son of Shimei, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Judah. Oh, look at that. Which is the son of Joanna, which is the son of Rish, which is the son of Zerubbabel, which is the son of Salahaliel, the son of Neri, they know their name, which was the son of Malkiki, which is the son of Adai, which is the son of Kasim, which is the son of El Elmodam, must have been dam built by Elms, which was the son of Ur, which is the son of Joseph, which was the son of Eliade. Eliezer, which is the son of Jerome, which is the son of Matthew, which is the son of Levi, which is the son of Simeon, which is the son of Judah. Hey, look at that one again. Which is the son of Joseph, which is the son of Joanna, which is the son of Elkayim, which is the son of Melia, which is the son of Menem, which is the son of Mathathatha. All right, now, important note. The son of Nathan, which is the son of David. This breaks with Joseph's line. Here, Joseph is the son of Solomon, the son of David, and we ran through the kings of Judah. Mary is a son of David, but not Solomon, Nathan. Nathan had another child, I mean, David had another child named Nathan. So, by the adoption of Joseph to Jesus, he gets the throne. By Mary through Nathan, you get the virgin birth where it said Jeremiah is it preaches to the world to the world I forget. Oh earth, earth, earth. Write this man child is. Here it is. This is that Jeremiah prophecy that no man will sit on that throne of Kaniah. But yet he'll be born of David. He told David, Not a man of you will ever be wanting. Well, how could you do that? The virgin birth through Mary being born of Nathan and David. How does he get the throne back? The adoption of Joseph, David, to Solomon. That's a very important verse there. Right in the middle of all these names are so born, you got to split. Which was the son of Jesse. Which was the son of Obed. Which is the son of Boaz. Now, whose name would be there? Ruth. Who was the son of Solomon, or Salmon, however you want to say it. 
No one ever could ever decide how to say Solomon. Which was the son of Nasan, which is the son of Embinadad, which is the son of Amram, which is the son of Ishram, which is the son of Pharaoh. You know the story of that one. Yeah. You ever check out the line of Jesus Christ in Matthew and Luke? You know he's got harlots in his line? You know what you do go digging when you go digging in your family tree? You find people hanging from them. I got a pilgrim that came to America on the Mayflower and ended up selling booze. Which is the son of Jacob, which is the son of Isaac, <laughs> Isaac, <coughs> which is the son of Abraham. Now that stops right there in Matthew 1. The genealogy of Matthew is a Jewish king stops right there. Luke, the medical doctor, keeps going, which is the son of Thyra, which is the son of Nacor, which is the son of Surah, which is the son of Regu, Prince Spaghetti Day, which was the son of Phali. Now, these are Greek names to the Hebrew. That's why they're misspelled. You think they're misspelled. Which is the son of Heber, Hebrew, which is the son of Selah, which is the son of Kaiah, which is the son of Arphaxad, which is the son of Shem, the son of the Ark. Not in Tennessee, which is the son of Noe, which is the son of Lamech, which is the son of Methuselah. That's the oldest living man in the world. The United States government would not have loved him with Social Security. Which was the son of Enoch. He was raptured. Which is the son of Jerry, which is the son of Malio, which is the son of Cana. That's the third son. I uh, know. Which is the son of Enos, which is the son of Seth. That's the third son. Which was the son of Adam. Which was the son of God. Now tell me. Can you trace your genealogy all the way back to Adam? Go ahead. Give it a shot. I can. I can do it. I can faithfully say I can trace my lane back to Adam. I go back to my mom and dad. I go back to my grandparents. I know my third generation grandparent, And I go back to Ham, Shem, or Japheth. Which go back to Noah. And I go back to... Uh, Cain or Seth or any other much I can't because I know other children and I go definitely back to Adam that way. I can't give you this list. Jesus Christ, we don't know his birthday, but we sure know his family learned. How's that? You cannot know when Jesus was born, but you can put down his family roots. His family roots come from David the king at a split, but the split makes him the king. The split makes him of David, so that prophecy is fulfilled. Both David shall never want a child not to be on that throne, but it was cursed in Jeremiah, so how do we do that? We do it by the adoption of Joseph. He's back in the kingly line after all those years, and then we come back, he's through Abraham. And then just to go even further, we go all the way right back to Adam, which came from God, which even leaves out Eve. Because Adam and Eve had no parents. That's the line of Jesus Christ. 